an effort to expand the variety here on the channel, we've been touching on a bunch of FPS titles, and right now, the trend in the FPS genre kind of leans towards extraction shooters. It's for some people, not for others. I get that. But with the tactical FPS games, there's a huge leaning trend of them being online only, requiring you to play online and usually to play with a squad to do well. That's where Incursion Red River comes into play, a new tactical FPS extraction shooter set in war-torn modern-day Vietnam that entered early access as of yesterday. The difference with this, it's not online only, and it's something that you can play single player as well. A PvE experience that allows you to focus on your own gear and your own journey. Today we're breaking down what this game looks like, what you should know, and everything about the current projects. So drop your thoughts as we go along, drop a like if you enjoy either the video, the first look at the game, or just want to help out the video and the algorithm with variety content, and make sure to subscribe for more. So, Incursion Red River caught my attention recently, and I'd been wanting to try it out for a little while now. I didn't get in on the demo that was available a few months back, but with the game being just a little over $13 on Steam currently to enter into early access here for the next week and a half or so, it wasn't anything too crazy that I decided to jump in and see what it was all about. Now, this is where we're going to break it down into two separate categories, the good and the bad. The bad we'll touch on later. I want to start out with the good because I think there is a lot of very, very good potential for this game in the future here and a lot of really good basic building blocks for the game and where we can go here. But there's definitely stuff you want to know on the opposite side of that. First and foremost, though, for the good stuff, it's a wicked alternative, I think, for players. It being PvE and a co-op or solo alternative to Tarkov, it's something that I know will be up a lot of people's alley. I feel like with the growth of the extraction genre here, there's a very distinct set of players who love the PvP and a very distinct set of players who hate the PvP. This game and a few others out there have allowed for more focus on the extraction loop and, and not necessarily player combat, which I think is a nice alternative. You have so many games that do encourage that PvP that sometimes it's hard to come by one with such potential that it more so PvE focused. Graphically speaking, it's pretty solid. It's Unreal Engine, it's built there, and the Unreal Engine is, as the name suggests, an engine with Unreal potential for graphical capabilities. I love when I get to play games in the Unreal Engine because, again, it can push those boundaries where possible if the developers decide to push those boundaries. I think that for the most part, it does look pretty good. Obviously, there's going to be some stuff that we talk about in the critical portion of this review that will touch on some stuff graphically that's buggy, but for the most part, like gun models, the world and atmosphere itself, I think looks pretty good. It's a very very easy to understand gameplay loop. Of course, the extraction loop at its core is you go in, you try and survive, you loot up and take whatever you have available in that game extract with it if you survive if you'll die you lose everything and also with this you have missions or jobs that are available as well to add to the layers of that your home base is pretty cool you have a solid firing range and other home base systems the firing range allowing you to get the fuel for the weaponry that you can come across job listings is an intuitive way to streamline your contracts and rewards it shows nicely everything you'll get upon completion as well which is definitely nice your armory of sorts is really cool shows off everything you have saved one thing that i thought was cool i'm not sure if it's intentional or not is that if you do a mission with the prefabricated loadout, which there doesn't appear to be any sort of limit on doing. You can go in with that every single time if you'd like. You'll end up being able to extract and keep all that loot, then go back in and do the prefab loadout again, extract and just kind of keep compiling all that stuff that you had. Then you can sell that your guns, ammo, armor, helmets, and everything you extracted with. So it kind of makes for a good, quick, and easy way to farm and grab some cash, it seems like. But again, I don't know if that's intentional or not. But there's a ton of customization options in regards to the shop and what you can pick up for ammo, weapon modifications, gear, and everything like that. And or if you want to loot off enemies as well, you can find a lot of that stuff in World. The map has a good bit to explore as well. We only have one at the moment. For an early access release, there's a decent bit to explore for sure. But as we'll touch on again, Again, in the critical portion of this, it's also something that's a double-edged sword. It's something that does get stale because while it's day one, it's good and everything, you have a lot to explore. After a large bit of gameplay, even just a few hours, you'll probably notice that you've known exactly where chests and stuff are. You know different routes that may present some difficulties, kind of like you mastering the map just a little too quick, perhaps. And I guess where I kind of want to leave this without going into too much specific detail is this game just has a ton of prospective upside. This is very easily something I could see turning into something when more complete. That's like a Tarkov-esque competitor here with this, a more hardcore, more tactical PvE extraction shooter. But again, without the parts of Tarkov that some people don't like, and also the ability to do it solo as much as you'd like offline and all. So it's definitely something that I think has a lot of potential. It can capture the audience here with it. It's just 
you got to get over some of the stuff we got to be critical about. First and foremost, it's early access. That $13 price point is about what you'll get in terms of the playable value at the moment. I say that while, again, still simultaneously sticking to that just mentioned point of there's tons of upside here for this. Like, I genuinely believe that this game can be really good in time. It's just right now, it seems like early access might have been a little too early to release this. And here's why. Firstly, the gameplay loop, it's pretty much what you'd expect with an extraction shooter, yes, but I can't complain about that per se. But one of the things that's meant to keep the game fresh in regards to the loop is the missions and contracts that are available from the job board. They're all relatively straightforward. They can be done within like five minutes or so each. And along the way, you probably won't see a whole ton of combat if you don't want to run into the middle of the military base. And honestly, even at that point, you still probably might not see a whole ton. I think the most I saw was like five enemy AI during one mission, maybe like six. But anyways, I was actually really fine with the offering of the three sort of factions worth of jobs to build reputation until I got to a point where only about an hour and a half in, I was repeating jobs like to a T. I knew exactly where I was planting some of the bombs for this job because I had done it like 20 minutes earlier. Perhaps that's a user error or something, but I didn't die immediately before, like if it was perhaps a case of like your jobs reset on death or something like that. So I don't know if that was intended or if that was just like, again, a bug that could have happened, but it is something that I was like, wait a second, I, I already did that. The singular map also can get quite stale quite quickly. The chests that you can loot are all seemingly in static spots. I caught onto that really quick to where they were. And on the map, there's really only like three main locations, really two military bases and the quarry. And with only one map currently, you just kind of have those main points of interest and then like some cliff sides and some of the jungle to really explore. But there's not a whole ton to explore in that jungle. A lot of that is just pathway and stuff like that. And speaking of chests, the mechanics, looting's like, semi-intuitive like the actual inventory system really not bad at all it's super in-depth you have a ton of items you can loot and everything like that you got your backpack systems your pouches and all that kind of stuff but the looting itself you have to be pinpoint on certain things to loot and enter a crate loot a dead body and so on like that if you're looking at a body but you're not looking at the prompt to loot that body it's not going to let you same thing with chests you can be looking at it but if it's not actually like highlighted on that prompt to open it it won't. I kind of wish that you'd have that ability to open it by looking at the object and interacting with it, not necessarily interacting with the prompt. That's just a little nitpicky perhaps on my end, but there's also a lot of bugs that I encountered with this, a lot geography related, like a lot of the hillsides of the jungle you can't really scale areas that I feel like you should be able to. It doesn't seem like there's an actual mantle system. You kind of just have to like jump and hope you're tall enough to jump over a rock or something like that. There are areas that you can simply get trapped in and not exit. Like for example, I fell off a ledge and into the water, but once you get in that part where I fell in, you can't get out. So there was no scalable geo that would allow me to just simply get out of that and for whatever reason like the out of bounds perimeter was there as well that like i kind of figured okay just like maybe move that back a little bit so i could go all the way back out of the water into the shoreline but i couldn't do that graphically speaking models are uh are strange you still have the issues where like player legs and body models are all sorts of different ways than they should be if you're looking co-op or if you're looking like down at your feet or something like that if you're just looking from your own point of view like down the barrel of your weapon you're not really going to notice a whole ton of stuff like that but some of those models definitely definitely need some changing You'll also see lighting bugs as well. You'll see sun and shadows coming through some completely closed off rooms. Kind of reminds me of like old school H1Z1 and DayZ days. That kind of stuff would happen all the time. I haven't played co-op, but I do hear that matchmaking and networking of co-op is pretty rough, like lots of disconnects and a lot of time getting into matches and stuff. So that's obviously stuff that needs to be ironed out as well. There was some prefabricated assets that I noticed. One thing at least that I could be wrong, pretty sure though it was the case, is that at least some of these areas were prefab to some degree. While edited, you can still see that the home base of the firing range is utilizing the Red Hawk military training facility, which is an Unreal Engine shop asset from 2021. Now I'm the guy that likes to give the benefit of the doubt, and it's obviously been modified to some degree. It's not like they're just straight up porting that base facility and selling it as a part of their game, but I'm hoping that in the future we see a bit more of customization and a sort of way for the game to differentiate itself over than just recognizing base assets from the Unreal Store. That's not the end of the world. PUBG was built on that kind of stuff. I don't know if anybody follows that. Like PUBG, the original PUBG was truly all just prefab stuff. But again, not a big deal, but that's just one of those things that I noticed. But 
anyways, like final thoughts here on this. One thing I don't like, especially when reviewing smaller indie games is the prospect of criticisms or pointing out items that could come across as just shitting on devs. That's the last thing that I want this to seem like. All the things we mentioned in this video as a sort of critique or negative aspect is generally just a standard with a small dev team. Game dev is hard as shit and I give kudos to anyone who gives it their all. But it becomes this conundrum of like, okay, can we delay this game if it requires additional funding? Will we have enough of a runway to be able to do this? Can we do that, then fix all these so the launch looks even better? That's likely hard to come by if you need to secure more funding, but if you release it too early, the game isn't where you want it to be and may leave a bad first impression on prospective players. It's this catch-22 of game dev in that sense. So I fully believe this game can have some tremendous success and can be a really good alternative for a ton of players for big extraction games, like big picture. Big picture, I do think this is like a perfect concept for a game for players who want to have that Tarkov gameplay loop and a hardcore tactical game without the online only aspect and without the PVP only aspects of the game as well. It's just that middle ground extraction shooter that I think will perform brilliantly when fully realized. It's just a matter of getting there. So fingers crossed as a fan of cool games that this is one of those things that can make it to the finish line amidst any sort of developmental hurdles in regards to timing, funding, fixing bugs and everything, whatever the case and whatever you may throw at the dartboard. If you'd like to pick up the game, it is again on sale for about $13 until the 22nd. But again, I think that value is about what you're picking up for the price at the moment. You're not paying $40 to $70 for a full title. So I'd expect that going in. I think that you have to realize going into this that if you do decide to purchase it, it's not necessarily for what you're getting now per se, but the best way I can think of it is almost like a Kickstarter campaign. You're paying upfront to own a game while it's being developed so that it can be developed further, almost like you're buying it to support the devs in particular, not necessarily so much the product at its launch in early access just yet. I don't know if that makes sense. And again, it's not for everybody. So that's totally cool if you decide not to. But I was excited to see what this game was going to amount to. I think there's a lot of potential here. But there are, of course, some things that we need to take care of and need to see cleaned up before we get to a point where I'm like, this game rocks. And I just it's all consuming where I grind it 24 seven. But anyways, what do you think? Do you see the upside of this year? Do you think there's a lot of potential for this game or do you not necessarily care so much. Anyways, let me know your thoughts down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. So almost a single thing running all things, maybe Incursion, Red River, more content here on that, but also a ton of other FPS content. I'd love to have in the community. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Might as well espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.